Imagine having to pay for something that you got on Amazon with a check. Worse yet, imagine using a bank order. Seems like something I just made up, right? Turns out that's how people paid for things that they bought online back in the late 90s. That was of course before digital wallets. Today, the online marketplace is different and more efficient. People can buy whatever they want without any type of hassle, payment or otherwise. So how did a bunch of Silicon Valley nerds, and I mean that in the nicest way, radically change how we pay our bills? And what distorting effect did this have on the startup ecosystem? Keep watching till the end to find out. Chapter 1 Inception The story of the digital wallet begins in 1998 when Peter Thiel, an accomplished businessman and published author, went to Stanford University to give a lecture. After which, Max Levchin, a Ukrainian-American computer scientist, met Thiel to propose an idea for a company. The idea was to encrypt and store data in a digital library, which could then be licensed out. Drawn by the possibilities, Thiel invested a sizable chunk of his hedge fund into the idea. Now established, the company came to be known initially as Field Link. Soon, however, they realized that there wasn't much demand in the market for that level of encryption-based security. Instead, Thiel suggested that they look into the possibility of making a digital wallet that could store and transfer money through email. So Levchin looked into this and was able to design and develop a product where users could send money to vendors directly online. As they moved to a newer purpose, they named their company Confinity, a combination of the words confidence and infinity. And with that they launched PayPal, Confinity's groundbreaking digital wallet. PayPal became a dark horse. It changed the entire game of payments. Everyone preferred it. It was much more convenient and smoother than traditional methods of transfer. By the first two years, PayPal was massively famous on eBay. So much so that almost every vendor on the e-commerce site was forced to sign up. Chapter 2 Expansion with all of PayPal's success, the market started to change. Something was to happen. Soon, they weren't the only ones pursuing the online money pie. Other players in the industry like Elon Musk were working on similar projects elsewhere. In the year 2000, taking note of PayPal's rise, Elon Musk initiated a merger between his company X.com and PayPal, making him its CEO for a while before Peter Thiel took over the reins again. During this period of throning and dethroning, many changes occurred for the one small company. But the biggest was in 2002 when PayPal went public on the stock market. That same year, their stock went up 55% on Nasdaq, which was considered a huge achievement for a startup. As the company continued to expand, other ventures around the world particularly in Europe, were working towards the same goal. They were designing and developing similar technologies and had already established a strong foothold on the local markets. To capitalize on this, PayPal went through an intense period of acquiring smaller companies. What came as a shock to the funders was eBay's sudden interest in PayPal soon after their listing on the stock market. You see, as it became the preferred wallet to customers, changing the game for the e-commerce site, eBay seized an opportunity and bought PayPal at a whopping $1.5 billion. After the acquisition, PayPal skyrocketed and the press couldn't get enough of it. PayPal was the cover story for almost every major magazine. Their union was a signal for a new future of online shopping and marketing, one that would continue to change and improve faster than any other industry ever had in the past. In just four years, PayPal had already crossed the 100 million users mark and launched an app that allowed people to pay using their phones. This was followed by another round of startup shopping, where PayPal acquired its biggest competitors, including Venmo. Chapter 3 exit of the PayPal Mafia. As PayPal and eBay charted an entirely new course together, the founders of the company weren't all that happy. Known by now in the Silicon Valley circles with respect and awe as the PayPal Mafia, they weren't satisfied with the restrictive company culture at eBay. 
They were geeks by definition, and corporate culture was alien to them. They felt that it hindered the creative process they were used to earlier. So despite the record-breaking success of their product, the PayPal Mafia decided to exit the company soon after the acquisition. David Sachs, the former COO of PayPal, later said, Basically, we were kicked out of our homeland and they burned down our temple. So we were scattered to the four corners of the globe, and we had to make new homes. And make new homes they definitely did. The initial members all went on to found other startups that also became billion dollar companies. From Elon Musk's Tesla to David Sachs' Yammer, they all did something profound and against all odds. This success points to a particular mode of work ethic and a form of company culture that would be used by many startups to replicate success in the future. Eventually, PayPal exited from eBay in the year 2014, after there were concerns from shareholders that the company was not performing its best under eBay. Ever since then, PayPal has continued to lead a whole new industry alone. In 2015, they launched a peer-to-peer -peer transfer mechanism, which completely changed the way people make even petty and trivial payments. No matter where you were in the world, regardless of currency, you could transfer money to anyone within seconds, creating yet another revolutionary way that money could be moved around. Chapter 4 – A Business Model to Kill For the success of the PayPal Mafia, even in their ventures outside of PayPal, has set an aspiring vision for entrepreneurs to follow. Their unique model of creative innovation is one quite unheard of. To elaborate, with the PayPal model, the team picked a problem that they were passionate about and just generated ideas and solutions on the fly. This was based on the company's ability to listen and integrate the opinions and hopes of all the employees within their own vision. Other than this basic principle, the hiring method of the company was unique as well. The founders later said that they would only hire employees who they thought would make good friends. Now who thought such an idea could work? Turns out the strong community of employees that they set up was exactly what the company needed to come up with many ideas that were out of the box. Now this brings us to the end of today's video. Do you think PayPal was revolutionary in its approach, or were they just another run-of-the-mill startup? If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm, so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week, and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.